Council's uh, Council's back in session. Uh, our next part of regular business is um, appointments to boards and committees, and the next uh, section is. The next section is mayoral appointments, downtown development authority, and economic development corporation. Uh, I move the uh, following appointments. Um, Ernest Reschke, uh, an at-large representative to the downtown development authority with a term expiring September 30th, uh, 2014. That's a reappointment. Douglas Schroeder at large, a term expiring also uh, September 30th, 2014. And Ward Randall uh, in district, uh, a term expiring September 30th, 2014. For Economic Development Corporation, reappointment of Charles Salgat to uh, a term expiring uh, to the Economic Development Corporation, term expiring April 30th, 2016. Mark Miller, term expiring April 30th, 2017. Report. Moved by the chair, supported by Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. Discussion of the motion? Mayor. Uh, Councilman Harlack? Move to separate the um, D D DDA and the EDC appointments. Support. Moved by Councilman Harlack, seconded by Councilman Fleming that we separate uh, the vote on uh, Downtown Development Authority and Economic Development Corporation. Discussion of the motion to separate the vote. Mrs. Bittner? Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Howerlack? Yes. Motion passes. Mrs. Bittner, the vote on the Downtown Development Authority? Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Howerlack? No. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Motion passes on Econo Economic Development Corporation, Ms. Spittner? Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Howerlack? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, next on city council appointments, uh, we must have a reconsideration mo um, motion to um, amend some of the um, terms of office. So if we could have a resolution for a reconsideration. Madam Mayor. Councilman Beltrami. Resolved that the attached resolution 2011-10-227 moved by Kerwin and seconded by McGinnis be reconsidered by City Council in order to adjust term expiration dates in the Charter Revision Committee, Liquor Advisory Committee, and Parks and Recreation Board. Support I can. Moved by Councilwoman Beltramini, seconded by Councilwoman McGinnis that we uh, approve the resolution to reconsider. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bittner? Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Howerlack? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Motion passes. Now we have a resolution to amend the City Council nominations. Madam Mayor? And then we'll do the amendments. Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Resolve that Troy City Council hereby amends the attached reconsidered resolution 2011-10-227 to adjust term expiration dates in the nominations for Charter Revision Committee, Liquor Advisory Committee, and Parks and Recreation Board in order to maintain continuity of terms as presented. Support. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin, seconded by Councilman McGinnis, that we approve the resolution as printed in red to amend uh, the uh, reconsidered resolution. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bittner? Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Howerlack? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? 
Would you like to? Um, well, it looks like it's one continuing resolution. Shall I simply walk us through it? Uh, well, there's. It is one continuous resolution, and some places there are two names, mm -hmm. and then the, then there's the tally vote after that. So, right. do we have to have these all read aloud again? It's not necessary because it was already read. It's the you could you could choose to read the amended if you'd like, or okay. you could just read it as you could say as presented. Okay, I'll move the That's resolution the as. Uh, as presented, and then uh, we can have the tally vote where there are multiple um, names Choices. listed. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second on the amended resolution? Second. Moved by Mayor Patem Kerwin, seconded by Councilman Slater, that we approve the resolution that forwards these nominations on. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bittner? Councilmember Howerlack? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, next is the tally vote for council, city council nominee choices. Uh, I animal control appeal board. Uh, Mrs. Bittner? Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Steve Toth. Well, you have to. Two. Two of those. Oh, uh, uh, go to go to the next page, and on page eight. Oh, okay, sorry. Up at the top, council. Uh, okay. Each time it tells you how many. I'm sorry. Oh, well, Jane Sager had asked for the reappointment, so I will be voting for Jane Sager and Steve Toth. Councilmember McGinnis. Sager and Toth. Councilmember Slater? Sager and Toth. Mayor Schilling? Sager and Toth. Councilmember Beltramini? Sager and Waters. Councilmember Fleming? Sager and Toth. Councilmember Howerlack? Sager and Waters. So by my calculation, it is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jane Sager and Steve Toth. Correct. We'll have that in the vote that comes up later on. Then. Okay. Okay. The Charter Revision Committee. Um, these are for three-year terms. There are three selections. I'm sorry. That should say there are two selections. Two selections. It says three. It should be two. It should be two. Okay, Mrs. Bittner. Councilmember McGinnis. Burke and Canoza. Councilmember Slater. Burke and Canoza. Mayor Schilling. Burke and Canoza. Councilmember Beltramini. Burke and Canoza. Councilmember Fleming. Burke and Canoza. Councilmember Howerlack. Loom and Canoza. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. Um, Canoza had uh, requested renomination, Bob Burke. Okay, so the two that received the most are Bob Burke and Shirley Canoza. Correct. Next, um, for Parks and Rec, uh, do we make three selections this time? Yes. Okay, Mrs. Bittner? Councilmember Slater? I hope I get the pronounce them right. Fegis? Fegis. Gazzetti, Stewart. Mayor Schilling. Pages, Gazzetti, Stewart. Councilmember Beltramini. Pages, Gazzetti, Stewart. Councilmember Fleming. Gazzetti, Stewart, Thompson. Councilmember Howerlack. Pages, Gazzetti, Thompson. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. Pages, Gazzetti, Stewart. Councilmember McGinnis. Pages, uh, Gazzetti, and Stewart. Well, the three are Kathleen Pages, Todd Gazzetti, and Jeff Stewart for the uh, Parks and Rec work. Okay, next we have City Council appointments, and we appoint for the Animal Control Board. These did not, oh, as determined. 
Good job. As determined by the tally vote. We did that. Do we have to, but we have to move a resolution now? Is that correct? That's for all of these? That's correct. Okay. Do we need to have all of these each read or because they're listed, do we do as you've, indicated? You've had the tally vote for the choices, so you right. don't need to read the entire thing again. Okay. But by the vote, we're also appointing those that were reappointments that we didn't need to tally because we only had one. They were, they were simply the nominations from last time. Right. Okay. So we need a motion, motion to approve for the appointments. So moved. Support. Support. Was that Councilman Bethany? And supported by Councilman Slater. Uh, moved by Councilman Beltamini, seconded by Councilman Slater. The City Council hereby appoints uh, persons to the following boards and committees. And the list is so indicated. And those that we went through the tally vote uh, are indicated in those slots. Discussion? Vote, Mrs. Bittner. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. Yes. Councilmember McGinnis. Yes. Councilmember Slater. Yes. Mayor Schilling. Yes. Councilmember Beltramini. Yes. Councilmember Fleming. Yes. Councilmember Howerlack. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, many of those um, that were in the list that were voted on were reappointments, people that had requested uh, reappointments. Uh, in some cases, there were uh, people who uh, had not requested reappointment uh, in some places where others uh, were placed in. Most of them were reappointments to boards that we're still keeping on board. For those boards that the council has um, uh, decided that we are not having those uh, committees as they were in um, previous times, they were sent a letter as requested by council uh, with my signature thanking them for their service to those committees and um, then we'll move forward from there. Okay, next we have uh, city council nominations for the employee retirement system board of trustees slash retiree health care benefits plan and trust and also the Zoning Board of Appeals. Madam Mayor. Council, uh, Mayor Patum Kerwin. Resolve that Tri-City Council hereby forwards the following nominated person to serve on the mm -hmm. Board and Committee as indicated. Employees Retirement System Board of Trustees Retiree Health Care Benefits Plan and Trust. Maureen McGinnis, City Council Representative. Unexpired term, 4-15-2012. Board. Do we have the other? No. Oh. Moved by Mayor Patem Kerwin, seconded by Councilman Slater, that we forward the following uh, nomination uh, for uh, boards and committees, the Employee Retirement System Board of Trustees slash Retiree Health Care Benefits Plan and Trust, uh, Maureen McGinnis, City Council Representative for a term, uh, the unexpired term, which uh, is completed in April 15th of 2012. Discussion of the vote? Mayor. Uh, Councilman Howard? Yes, um, I guess my question is, you know, um, th this individual appointment will represent the, the next city council. And so um, I would ask all seven of them, four, uh, three and a half of whom aren't here, because I have no idea how the mayoral election is going to turn out. But at the very least, um, there certainly will be another uh, member of council and uh, perhaps uh, uh, Councilwoman Beltramini, uh, Councilman Slater. I'm not sure if either of them are interested in the, in the position. And there are a number of very interesting candidates um, out of the entire uh, team of folks on the ballot, many of whom might make fine candidates. And so I would, I would actually move to postpone this resolution until the next regular city council meeting. I support. Moved by Councilman Harlack, seconded by Councilman Fleming, that we postpone the uh, appointment to the next city council meeting. Madam Mayor. Discussion of the vote, uh, Mayor Patem Kerwin. The concern is that without putting forward the name, that the next meeting won't have any representation at all. It is, that's the way we do it now. It's a two meeting thing. You put the, forward the name, it's considered, and then uh, you can vote on the next time. Currently, 
and for a long time, frankly, um, the board uh, votes certain representatives to come forward, including city council, but employee retirees and then current employees and so on. It's all men. The only woman who will be left here will be the sitting mayor and a council member uh, McGinnis. I think there is benefit in having at, at least one woman um, sitting as a, represent, a representative on that, on that board. Um, and uh, we know that uh, Council Member McGinnis is available and qualified for this. So I will not be voting on the postponement. I think it's important that in November when the audit report comes and other things that council has a representative at that meeting and that can't happen under our rules unless a name comes forward now. So I'm comfortable in um, voting no on the postponement and voting yes for Maureen McGinnis as the city council representative. Further discussion of the postponement? Madam Mayor. Uh, Council <clears throat> Beltrami. I, I understand Councilman Harrelak's position um, regarding speaking for future councils. But I do believe that Councilwoman Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin's point is well taken, that at that this critical time of the year to have someone from council not available and appointed and voting at that meeting is is severe um, and I the future council can choose to do something else but I I do believe that we need to put this nom name and nomination tonight to at least start the ball rolling uh, I concur with uh, both comments by Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin and Councilwoman Beltramini uh, and think that uh, Councilwoman McGinnis would be a fine representative to that board. Having served on that board myself, I know what it entails and I uh, think it's important to have representation um, right away on that board. Uh, new council members will bring skills to the table, yes, but they usually don't want to take on additional uh, responsibilities until they've gotten their feet wet on the regular things that we do. Uh, at least that's uh, what I have observed in uh, my years on council, 18 on council and seven and a half as being mayor. So that's why I think it's important that we uh, move ahead with vote tonight. Mayor. Councilman Hollenack? You know, th this is all very interesting, but this board, this retirement system, whether or not this council or any future council desires to recognize it or not, plays a, a tremendous role in the financial situation, if you will, of, of this city. And it's directly as a result of the economic downturn, the financial crisis in 2008, that even put forward, if you will, a number of unpleasant scenarios which fortunately didn't play out for this city. But it did bring us to that, the brink, if you will. And so we need somebody on that board, we need that entire board to exercise a lot better accountability. That board does not receive monthly financial statements. The board members don't know how much cash is available or is needed. This is a pension plan. The general fund fronts money for the pension plan and then there's a due to due from balance between the pension plan and the general fund because they don't exert proper cash management practices. The pension plan has not approved nor has the city council who is appointing somebody to this board has not seen the actuary report even though it's been floating around out there in draft form for two months and we were promised that we would receive that by August and it's now October. I can go on but I didn't see Councilwoman Slater, or excuse me, Councilwoman McGinnis at the last pension plan meeting and the last appointment we made to the pension board, that individual who always complained about me missing meetings, missed the first three and a half of those meetings and they only meet every month. So I'm more than happy if you folks want to select somebody prior to the election 
as long as that person is, is going to do what any fiduciary would do. And I'm not telling you how to do your job. I'm just pointing out some gross errors in place that as a constituent, as of next month, of all of you up here who are remaining, I would like to see them addressed. For the discussion on the postponement, the vote, Mrs. Bittner? Councilmember McGinnis? No. Councilmember Slater? No. Mayor Schilling? No. Councilmember Beltramini? No. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Howerlack? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? No. Uh, motion to postpone fails. Uh, the motion to uh, make the appointment, Ms. Bittner? Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? We're placing this into nomination. Yes. Yes. It is not to make an appointment. It's to place in nomination. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Yes. Did yes. I miss yes. forward the Sorry. Name. Forward the name. Part. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Haverlack? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Motion passes. That name is forwarded and uh, there'll be a vote at the next council meeting on the uh, appointment. Next, we go to transfer of uh, Class C liquor license to uh, Troy Sports Restaurant. There is A and B, which can be moved uh, together at the same time. Do we have a resolution? Madam Mayor. No. Councilman Beltrami. Resolved that the Troy City Council I hereby considers for approval a liquor license request as indicated below, which is transfer from Joe Kaliski's LLC to Troy Sports Restaurant LLC, and hereby authorizes the mayor and city clerk to ex execute the document, a copy of which shall be attached to the original minutes of this meeting, and Whereas the Troy City Council deems it necessary to enter into agreements with applicants for liquor licenses for the purpose of providing civil remedies to the City of Troy in the event licensees fail to adhere to Troy codes and ordinances, therefore be it resolved that the Troy City Council hereby approves an agreement with the liquor license applicant named in the approved resolution above and hereby authorizes the Mayor and City Clerk to execute the document a copy of which shall be attached to the original minutes of this meeting. Second. Court. Moved by Councilman Beltamini, seconded by Councilman Fleming, that we approve the resolution uh, A and B. Discussion? Vote, Mrs. Bittner? Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Howerlack? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, next we have the I-5, which is the Winter Maintenance Agreement with the Road Commission for Oakland County. Um, would someone like to move the resolution? This is... Um, and Mayor? Co uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? I would love to move this resolution. <laughs> <laughs> Be it resolved that the 2011-2012 Winter Maintenance Agreement between the Road Commission for Oakland County and the City of Troy for Snow and Ice Control of certain primary and local roads, which are described and outlined in Exhibit A, is hereby approved, and the Mayor and City Clerk are authorized to execute the necessary documents. A copy of this agreement, which is authorized by the provisions of 1951 Public Act 51, MCL 247, dot 651 at, uh, at sequence shall be attached to the uh, original minutes of this meeting. Second. Moved by Mayor Patem Kerwin, seconded by Councilman Hollerlach that we approve the resolution as printed in red. Discussion of the motion? Uh, Mayor Patem Kerwin? I did think that in the background information the letter really was, was very nice in any way that we can continue that good relationship and that good working relationship should be should be encouraged. We'll make that happen. Uh, I too was encouraged by their letter. Uh, the only thing that I continue to say that I've said all along is that, that I'm hoping that at some point the Oakland County Road Commission will come up with enough money to pay their full share of City of Troy plowing the county roads and we won't have to pick up the amount that they don't cover. 
uh, for many years. The uh, city has covered that uh, with uh, our uh, city of Troy tax dollars to uh, plow those roads. They pay a certain share, yes, and we're glad uh, that we can do that and that they still want us to do it because we're, we do it better than the county will be doing it. Uh, and, uh, but I'd like them to pay the full amount. I think that that would be the fair way for them. So I continue to say that. But I'll be happy to vote for this resolution. Mrs. Bittner, the vote. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Hauerlach? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Motion passes. Next, we come to the consent agenda. Uh, anyone on council want any items removed from the uh, vote? Yeah. Councilman Fleming? I'd like to remove J4A and J8. J4A and J8. Yes. Okay. Any others, council? Okay, could we have a resolution uh, approving all except for those two? Resolved that Troy City Council hereby approves all items on the consent agenda as presented, with the exception of items J4A and J8, which shall be considered after consent agenda items as printed. Support. Moved by Councilman Fleming, seconded by Councilman McGinnis, that we approve all the items on the consent agenda item with this vote, except for J4A and J8, which will we will consider after this vote. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bittner? Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Hauerlach? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Motion passes. J4A, Councilman Fleming? Yes. I read the detailed backup for this uh, disk based backup system. And uh, I understand it, but I'm just wondering if we could uh, have staff give us the payback on this. I know it's inconvenient the way we're currently doing it. And at one time, the way we were doing our backup for computer systems was state of the art. Now there's a better way, but better doesn't always mean that it's, it's more cost effective. So what I'm looking at for it before we spend, it's not a huge amount of money, but it's $21,800 plus there's some reoccurring cost for maintenance each year. What the payback is on this, Mr. Zerlake, do you want me to call on Mrs. Periscava? Please. Okay. Mrs. Periscava? Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Um, the payback, would, the real savings um, that you could count would be labor savings. And just uh, a rough estimate, very conservatively, um, we spend probably an hour and a half, two hours a week juggling tapes just in IT. That's not counting motor pools time. Um, if there are problems with the tape drive, and periodically there are, tapes get stuck, we need repair, that type of thing. Um, I'd say very conservatively, if there were no problems, we'd probably have about a nine-year payback. But because we do consistently have problems now and then, it's probably more around a five to six-year payback. Because it would be a savings, I, I would say roughly about $5,000 a year in uh, staff time. But beyond that, the real, um, the real uh, feature of this is that it can be off-site and we could actually store it somewhere where it doesn't require any interaction. Uh, and as I put in the memo I'm proposing, we put it at the Troy School District so that we can start to establish kind of an off-site data recovery center where right now we send tapes off-site if something should happen here at City Hall we would need another tape device to be able to read those tapes. In this case, we have a disk system off-site. We don't need anything else. We can have access to that data from various facilities that belong to the city. So either from the DPW, the training center, if something should happen here at City Hall. So it's a much uh, more stable place to have data off-site. But right now, we physically have to take tapes off-site Thank you for that explanation. Also, as I understand it, with the current tape backup system, in the event you have to utilize it, it's very cumbersome, yes. time-consuming, mm -hmm. 
to try and, and research the tape to find the area that you really need. Well, it's, this disk system, is it, is it readily available much, much quicker? Yes, quick? it's much quicker. So when we get requests to restore files, which we do very frequently every week, um, now we have, if tape isn't on site, we have to request it off site, they send it here, then we load it, then we wait for it to restore. Whereas with a tape, with a disk backup system, it's immediately available. We grab it and restore it in a matter of minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Would you like to move this resolution then? Yes, reside, okay. reside at Troy City Council hereby approve J48. Second. A. A, J4A, excuse me. Still second. Moved by Councilman Fleming, seconded by Councilman Hollenach that we approve J4A with his vote. Mrs. Bittner, the vote. Councilmember Howerlack? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Motion passes. You were thinking ahead to this one. Yes, I was. J48, uh, the expansion and purchase of the self checkout stations for the Troy Public Library. You had a question on this? Yes, just a concern. We're looking, and I know we currently have some of these now, but we're looking at purchasing three more of these self checkouts at a cost of about $36,500. <laughs> and uh, I'm wondering if there's a payback here and how we've justified the payback on, on these as well. And also further, if this is not a decision that should be taken by the new uh, the new lifetime learning committee. Madam Mayor. Mayor Patam Carwin. The things that are in this consent agenda, like the last item, are really covered in the budget. In the budget that we just approved at our last meeting, we approved this. Yes. So we've already done this. This is that's a consent portion. So the details behind this, but but it has been approved by us already. Yes. That's why we don't really spend time on it anymore. We did talk about it, I believe, at the last uh, at yeah. the last meeting. I understand that, but we may have approved it, but I think we have a fiduciary responsibility for every penny that we spend here that there should be we should be able to demonstrate a payback on any expense that we have. Uh, I can speak to I don't know if Mrs. Russ is here or not, but I can speak Sorry. to um, the fact that uh, this was determined uh, to save time and uh, actually expedite things with the checkout system. Uh, and it was planned uh, as one of the items that would be part of the budget for the library should they uh, have funding to do this. And one of the things that we felt moves this forward on uh, 21st century library um, so I I'm in, in favor of this because I do see that uh, additional self checkout stations will be of assistance uh, to people and that they will be easily able to do it and for those that can't do it there will be some staff to help but it will cut down on the volumes uh, that way um, Councilman McGinnis well, that's, I was just wanted to bring up the point in our previous discussions. I think it was addressed in terms of not having staff needed there to physically check the books in and out, and then the staff, which is less than it used to be, can be reorganized in a way that would be more efficient. So I think that's what I remember in our previous discussions, and I think that's why it's coming forward. And I was under the impression that it was on the consent agenda because we already discussed it and approved it in the budget. So I didn't have an objection to it. Mr. Miller, did I see you indicating you wanted to... Well, something? I'm available to answer any questions you have for Ms. Russ. She was unable to be here okay. this evening. Any other, were there other questions that you had, uh, Councilman Fleming? No, my main concern, I know we have these already. They're being fully utilized. So basically what you're saying is we've already demonstrated with the use of the ones we have that there's a payback, even though we can't tell what the dollar figure is in the budget that we've already passed for the library. Reflect this and the labor savings in the budget. I was wondering if there's any additional labor savings as a result of these self-checkout stations. This is already reflected in the budget. Mr. Miller? Madam Mayor, members of council, yes, this will be um, an efficiency in that it will eliminate the need for personnel to actually be there to check out and check in um, the, the materials. 
also at some point in time in the future that we accept credit or debit cards this you will be able to pay fines at this location too i mean at i did not specifically discuss with miss russ whether we have an exact um payback um I, so i don't have that with me this evening okay. information related to that okay one of the sentences in the uh, memo says that this time saving will also allow library staff members to be cross trained to perform other library functions and i think that that's the main point they'll still have need staff for, to do certain things and to sure. be available if needed for this but there are many other functions that occur within the library uh, that they could be doing and so uh, i think that this is a good use of uh, the funds okay I move the resolution. Okay. Second. Moved by Councilman Fleming, seconded by Councilman Beltamini that we approve the resolution for J4A as printed. Discussion, uh, further discussion? J Vote, Mrs. J8. J8. J8, excuse me, now I caught it from you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Bittner, the vote. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember Guinness? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Belchamini? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Howerlack? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, that concludes all of the consent items. And now we'll move to uh, council comments. Uh, I should indicate to council members that uh, if they wish to have any uh, comments that they make uh, on departing uh, council that they may do so at this time. Uh, and if uh, council members are staying, wishes to make any council comments, they may do that. And I'm going to go last on council comments. So uh, anyone have any comments that they'd like to make at this time? Madam Mayor. Councilman Beltsme. I, I have some um, housekeeping items as much as anything we had we received a series of emails this week on the baker boyd traffic situation and there was another letter on the table tonight and i know that the police department the school district traffic committee are all looking at this issue and i have encouraged people to be patient with us because the safety of children being delivered and collected to school as well as the property rights of the people who live along this street at this there's tension there and we need to fix it um, it's it's interesting that a few months ago we had a similar situation where we erred on the side of the children getting themselves to school and we put in a sidewalk and I have been accused of that being the sidewalk to nowhere. So I guess it depends on where your perspective is, how safe you think children need to be. And I think ours need to be safe everywhere. So we will continue to work on this issue. But it's, it's not just Boyd Street. Um, and it's something we need to think about as a community. We have those narrower roads with the street post boxes that are throughout our community. And I was talking to somebody just this evening and streets a block and a half long, but still almost got run over getting your mail. So we need to think about the engineering of those streets and how it impacts today's residents um, as well. But particularly in this case, we need to work a little harder and faster with the school district on their bus route or something, please. Um, the library came up tonight again, and we've heard all kinds of things about the level of service that we're getting with the library. We knew the millage was for the 55-hour library, not the 65-hour library. Um, the, the complaints I heard this week were on the collection, and was it being were we getting our collection budget the way it needed to be? And what we saw in the budget that we passed, yes, but I guess I would like to know from management soon how long it's going to take to implement that so that people really see the collection being managed appropriately 
and I know that we're hiring adult services, youth services, full-time personnel, um, but we're still only looking at six full-time people mm -hmm. and volunteers. And if six isn't enough, then maybe Kathy needs to look at hiring back more full-time people and doing away with some part-time people. But it's a balancing act. So that's, that's a piece of that that I would like to see worked on. And I will say to all of you, um, we've spent a lot of time here together. And some of it I've enjoyed and some of it's been god awful. But that's how it is, basically because of the situation in which we find ourselves. So I, I wish you all well. And I think we have learned a lot from each other. And we will move forward together one way or another. So thank you for your service, all of you. Anyone else on council comments? Go oh, ahead, Mark. Mayor, uh, is, is the protocol for the members that are leaving to go first? Is that the normal uh, protocol? It, uh, no, it, no. <clears throat> there is no real uh, rule about it. Uh, some people had items to bring up yeah. from um, things that they did on uh, behalf of the council education for the community. Some people had things they wanted to say. It just, it varies, you know. So if you want to go next. Go ahead. Okay, I'll oh. go next. Um, I'll start with Co Co Councilman Hauerlich. Um Martin and I met when he was 16 years old. Um, a lot of people don't know that, and we'll keep that a secret. <laughs> um, but um, somebody mentioned early tonight that your father should be proud of you, and I see he's here tonight, and I think he would be very proud of you. And uh, thanks for your service, and uh, I wish you the best uh, in your future, um, whatever you do. And uh, Councilwoman Kerwin um, has become a friend of mine. Uh, I'm going to miss you up here. And uh, good luck with your kitchen. <coughs> Mayor Schilling. Um, We've known each other a long time, and she's kind of been my mentor, uh, helped me along uh, quite a bit, and I appreciate that, and I thank you for your friendship, and uh, I'll never forget you. Thank you. Thanks for all your service. Thank you. Anyone else on council comments? Uh, Councilman Fleming. Yes, Mayor. I'd like to to thank all of you for your service as well, Council I'm in Kerwin, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin, for all your service on the, the school board and your, your tireless efforts here on, on Council. And uh, wish you all the best. And you have more time to spend with your family now, whatever your career, wherever your career takes you. So wish you all, all the best and thank you for your service. And uh, Councilman Howlick, uh, I really miss you, my friend. And uh, thank you. You've been here a long time. Uh, you've got a lot of support in this community, and uh, you're going to really be missed. And uh, best of luck to you and whatever your future endeavors are. Mayor Schilling, 25 and a half years. Uh, you told me 18 years on council, not at all one stretch, but 18 years on council and seven and a half years as mayor. So. Thank you for your, your tireless efforts as well and all the work you've, you've put into this city. And again, wish you the best and more time with your grandchildren and whatever you decide to do. So thank you again. Thank you. Mayor? Councilman Slater? I, I just forgot one person. Okay. Um, and maybe it was a Freudian slip. Um, but uh, Councilwoman Beltramini, also thank you for all that you've done for the city and uh, best of luck to you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Councilman McGinnis? I had a couple of housekeeping things and then I'll get into the mushy stuff, I guess. But um, I just wanted to point out and give congratulations to um, two upstanding members of the community that 
are receiving awards for 2011 Outstanding Volunteers for the Troy Boys and Girls Club. Um, that would be our Cindy Stewart and Troy Police Department Sergeant Zelinsky. So I wanted to point that out. That comes in our reports, and, and I wanted to make sure that they get credit where credit is due. Um, I also wanted to point out in our reports that there are some uh, detailed updates on where many of our biggest departments stand in terms of ICMA recommendations and where we are moving towards implementing some of those things that I think are extremely useful and are definitely going to head us in the right direction. As always, I appreciate you keeping us in the loop, and I think that those reports did a fantastic job of showing us where our um, city staff and our management are focusing their efforts. Um, and it shows a lot of leadership because nobody likes change. And that's a lot of change just within the bodies of those reports. And I really commend you for following up with your staff and your staff really taking the reins and um, taking the initiative to keep us moving forward. We got a lot of great information. Um, and I don't want to lose sight of what our goal is. And that's really to make us the best, every single department, every single employee. Um, I tend to think we already are the best, but I know that there's room for improvement and we've got the tools. I'm, I really am excited to see that happen. Luckily for me, I'll be here for another two years <laughs> to keep the ball moving forward, but um, as, as great of an accomplishment as what we've done has been, I really think that it wouldn't be possible without us as a group, but definitely the people that are going to be saying goodbye or the people that are finishing up their term. So I just wanted to call that out by name, the mayor, um, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin, Councilwoman Beltramini, Councilman Hauerlach. Um, I have a different perspective. I've only been here for two years, but I know the amount of time that all four of you have put in is astounding. And I said to Dane a little bit earlier today, training wheels come off um, because we're losing some great people uh, on this council and, and in your position as mayor that have inspired me, welcomed me, and given me some amazing direction in my first two years here. So I hope that we can continue to make you proud, um, continue in your tradition of service. I thank you personally for everything that you've done, uh, that you've done and I know that members of the audience and the community feel the same way. Um, so. Thank you. Please don't be strangers. I'm sure we'll be calling on you for, for your advice and your wisdom. That's all. Thank you. Um, Councilman Howarlack and uh, Mayor Patem Kerwin, do you have some words for us? OK. Councilman Howarlack? Thank you, Mayor. Um, let me, before I get moving here, just so rumors don't start, <laughs> Uh, the councilman or councilman Slater um, and I met yes when I was 16 because like many 16 year olds <laughs> I thought I knew how to drive and I suppose I did but it didn't uh, didn't prevent me from having a couple of accidents as city my father is well aware of that and you know it's funny you get married and you start thinking about having kids and you start to think oh gosh those kids when they come and will eventually become 16 <laughs> so now I'm not really sure that uh, <laughs> We have a long time, <laughs> but it's at the back of my mind. Anyway, so he uh, actually uh, was one of the first uh, uh, police, uh, uh, police officials on the scene because it was the old high school where, um, just on the street where I had my first wreck. Um, at any rate, just wanted to put that uh, question mark to, to rest. But he didn't remember that when, when he came on board. I said, you know, you gave me my first ticket. Now, <laughs> now <laughs> that wasn't such a bad thing because, quite frankly, that was the least of my concerns at the time. <laughs> anyway, so, um, you know, this day has finally come. And, um, you know, I knew it would, uh, would eventually be here. You know, the moment is now. And I always knew that uh, I'd be here in this seat at my last meeting. And, um, uh, when you're elected to a, a position, you're not sure if it's going to be one term or three years or whatever it's going to be, but I always knew I would need to make a farewell at some point. One knows these things, but the hour is so large that it is always difficult to, to be prepared and to know the right words. So let me start with this little note of interest. I've actually been elected to three times. Most of you know that. However, what you may not realize, and I didn't even think about 
the significance of this until this evening, is that each of those three terms had a different length. Now that won't be the case anymore, but my first term was three years. My second term was four years and seven months. It was a transitional term. And then my final term here is four years. So it will have been nearly 12 years when I leave office next month, all told. Now a few, for a few comments. To the people of Troy, my time in office has been very rewarding, but also very demanding. I have worked to represent all Troy residents and to initiate good policy while protecting against bad policy and abuse of power. Troy is a great city and we are all called to work hard to keep it that way, both those of us that are, are elected and everybody else as well, through good times and in bad. And so I move on and new leaders will be welcomed as our representatives next month. To my colleagues, past and present, I've really appreciated the, the opportunity to serve with all of you and there have been many. Uh, there have been three mayors, a couple of city managers and countless uh, colleagues on the city council. To my colleagues continuing after this election, and there will be at least three, perhaps four, uh, Councilwoman McGinnis, Councilman Slater, uh, Councilman Fleming, and perhaps Councilwoman Beltramini in another position. You folks all have my support as elected officials, and I, I pray for you that you will do a good job. I have, I have faith that you will. We may not always agree on issues, but what I, I can assure you, I want you to do a good job. To those who will be elected next month, and of course we have um, a ballot to, to select those four, you have a difficult job. And remember that when you're elected, nobody else is going to do it for you. And if you have a position, please, you will be my constituent and I ask you to speak your mind. Don't hold it in you. You're elected to, to do the will of the people of the city. And I'm also in support of you as well. Again, I, I may not vote for you, but once you're elected, I want you to be rooting for the city of Troy. And if you do that, I'll be rooting for you, regardless of who I voted for. To those who will not be elected next month, despair not. There's a place for you in this city. It may be another election. It may be volunteering. It may be assisting the city in some other way, but there is definitely a position for you and please, Please do not disappear, we need you. These are not easy times here in Troy. We've been dealt a difficult hand. This country has been dealt a difficult hand. But to be honest with you, I'm extremely optimistic. I'm optimistic because the people of Troy, the people of this country, we, we've gotten through some much worse times and we'll get through this too. And I think that's why everybody, there, I think that's why there's a lot of angst here. You know, this discourse that we call uh, the public debate, the public policy, is just that, it's discourse. But at the end of the day, you know, we are all human beings. And my faith says that all human beings are created in the image and likeness of God. And, and as public officials and as, as residents of the city, what we need to do when we're debating an issue is remember that there's another human being we're debating with. Look through the issue through their eyes. Look, walk in their shoes. You don't necessarily have to agree with them, and, and by all means, I've, I've argued vocifer vociferously for positions, but there's a distinction. There's a great distinction between a vociferous argument or a vociferous debate on policy and personal attack, and, and we need to make sure that we keep that boundary. And um, I may have forgotten something, but um, one thing I do want to mention is I want to thank my, my wife, Jane, for um, affording me this uh, luxury of time. You know, we all have 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, and 365 days in a year. And I look forward, because God has blessed me with the most wonderful wife in this world, and I look forward after I um, leave my time in office to use some of that time that was otherwise spent here to give to my wife, because I'm, I'm deeply blessed, and I love her dearly. And um, <clears throat> so I will, um, one final comment. Two weeks ago, Mr. Jim Savage came up to this podium before this city council 
and referenced Tommy Douglas. Now, mind you, Tommy Douglas was a, an amazing Canadian politician. Now, my politics and, and his and, and the party that he founded were not necessarily the same, but there's a deep respect for a, a man of integrity and a man who can, quite frankly, have a speech like he could. But I could help not, I could not help but note with his reference to Tommy Douglas with interest, for Tommy Douglas led Canada's new Democrat Party for decades relegated to perennial third place, but bringing intelligent conversation to the political discourse within the parliament of our Canadian friends to the north. Finally, after all these years, a most fascinating man, Mr. Jack Layton, carrying on in the honor of Tommy Douglas, led the party to near control of government for the first time an NDP leader of the opposition, only to die of cancer within six months of his election. Respected for his integrity by friend and foe alike, always beaming with optimism, and perhaps the most respected politician in Canada, Jack Layton left us with words of wisdom that are profound in their simplicity. As I leave this seat for the last time, I would like to leave you with those words as well. And I quote, my friends, love is better than anger. Hope is better than fear. Optimism is better than despair. So let us be loving, hopeful, and optimistic, and we'll change the world. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I don't have any of that. Uh, what I do have is a wrap-up from the MML convention. So I did pass out some of the materials from that. I think it was... Um, Really, I, th I always think it's a good idea to um, take advantage of the educational opportunities that we have, and MML did a wonderful job, I think, on creating a sense of place, which was the theme this year. I'm glad that the city manager was able to join us, because I think it's very helpful to see the same vision at the same time. And boy, did uh, MML put it together this year. Um, MML now has a book, and they, they had it at the convention. It's called The Economics of Place, The Value of Building Communities Around People. And uh, the TED that I was able to, to moderate really put together a number of different effective tools, I think, regarding place. So I hope that the next council takes a look at, at what we know works because it's data-based. But again, I was grateful that, that um, our folks were able to come. Um, what I usually do, and I, I would like to do it again, is talk about the race for the cup because it highlights in our eight different regions things that work in communities that can be duplicated. And um, there, the first one is right here in Southfield. Region one is Southfield, and they created the field zone, took an old uh, part of a municipal building, and got some resource together and created a place for um, youth to go. Uh, particularly in that vulnerable time after school. Papa, uh, Region 2, did uncork Papa. I really liked it. I think we could, I would recommend looking on the Papa's website because what they did was invest their DDA money. And I think they did it in a really neat way. They had more than $400,000 in grants for the past three years, and they used it for education training. Uh, for investment, for building facades, interior improvements, and also proactive uh, support for, for young businesses. We talked a lot about gardening, um, entrepreneurship, and I think uh, Region 2 and their DDA did a wonderful job on that. Ludington, uh, known as a, a summertime vacation spot, decided to do something for the winter, which was fabulous, and they have a ball drop. And people came from all over, and there was such excitement in Ludington to um, get involved around a family activity. Some of that was mentioned, in fact, uh, by our residents tonight. I'm gonna come back to Region 4 because they're the winner, and you have to get out your shirt. Um, Vassar was very cool. They had a, had a great idea. It was chill on the hill to, to, to create a great sledding place by using the, the expressway and bring it right into the town, and, and that was wonderful. West Branch decided that the town kind of closed up on the weekends, and so they started Fabulous Fridays with, re, uh, with a, a lot of fun themes. Uh, boys and their toys, and they would do big trucks, or they would, they would do it, uh, one time they did a motocross. Everything on Fridays brought people in. Of course, it was a really big help to the economy. Marquette did something, I think, very unique. Um, there were some drownings, and they 
uh, much like our Troy Community Coalition does, it combined all segments in their community, all the segments in their community, to talk about uh, waterfront safety. And uh, they were very proactive in it. It was uh, uh, with multiple safety efforts and saved lives as a result, and I think that's great. But the one that won, and you gotta love it, is from Claire, and it's Cops and Donuts. And what happened in this community, and this is the best, they have a, a whole series of shirts now. I wish I was at Cops and Donuts. They have a, oh, so we brought this back. Um, what happened was, as you can, in Claire, there are, the, the, in, the entire department is nine. They have nine people in the police department. And uh, the, the, ba the Claire Bakery was going to close. The man who had been, you know, manage, uh, the owner operator for years and years, his, his children didn't want it. And so um, the bakery was just going to close up. And the cops, of course, said, oh, <laughs> can't let that happen. Where will we get our donuts and coffee? So they sat around the table, did kind of a what if. What if, what if we bought it? And sure enough, the nine officers uh, bought the bakery. And do you know that turned the whole place around? It's now on Facebook. It's known internationally. But these nine folks who got together and said, what if? Let's go ahead and put some investment in this bakery. Hired back the people who were going to be let go. Now 20 people work there. They've had so much fun in it. They sat around, as cops do, and said, well, what if, what if we make a donut with bacon strips? And, and, and we'll have a maple bar with bacon. And sure enough, or donuts the size of plates. They have coffees. They did a midnight shift coffee or an early morning coffee. Just had a lot of fun. And what brought all of these different examples together for me, and I did share it at the convention, were these things. And I think it's something that we can learn and emulate. Each one involved a place, a sense of place, an idea of place, whether it was a place for kids, or whether it was a place to be together on New Year's, or whether it was a waterfront, or whether it was a bakery. And an idea, a what if. People sitting around saying, what if we tried this? opening that thought process. An investment, each one took some money. They sprinkled in some fun. Everything had a fun element, all of the different ones. They sprinkled in some fun and people who cared. They shook it up together and what happened? People came. They create a memory. They spend some money and they do it again. Over and over and over, the success is duplicated community by community by community throughout this state. These are just eight, but that's what we have to be thinking about. A place, a what if idea, an investment, creating a memory, people who care, a sense of fun, there's money to be made from this, there's success to be had for this, but more than anything, there's the building of community together. So I encourage the next council to learn from what we learned, that this is happening in communities all over. Each one has a, has a flavor with it, but do learn that a sense of place matters. Troy's sense of place matters. Our community matters, and we are going to be profitable again as individuals and as a community when we put those ingredients together, shake it up, and make it happen. And to my colleagues, um, thank you so much for the time we spent together, and I wish, wish you all well in your endeavors in the future. Oh, I did, I did want to mention a couple other things. Sorry. Um, congratulations to Maureen McGinnis. She got her education award. It's the first of the level three, and I got my level three. Um, Robin has this, and of course, Dave Lambert has this before. That was nice, and also at the same conference, so pleased um, that our um, City Attorney Lori Bloom was elected Vice President of the uh, Municipal's uh, MAMA, as we call it, uh, Attorneys Association. So thank you for the time you give. There's not been a conference where you haven't come to give an education component, and we've all benefited from that. We appreciate that give back piece. Finally, if you want to see people who give back, come Wednesday to the Leadership Troy Banquet. It's going to be at the Greek Orthodox um, uh, Banquet, isn't it? Saint 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 Banquet yeah. facility. I don't want to call it the church, but it, it's it's over there, uh, which is fabulous. But people in our community uh, who give back quietly, uh, week after week, 
year after year. And some awardees are in the room at, at, as we speak. So we do recognize, again, Frank Howell, who, who certainly awarded that, many of the volunteers who have deep, deep roots. Um, that's really what, what makes this, this town great. And I hope you come out Wednesday and see that. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Mayor Tim Kerwin mentioned about uh, Lori Gray Bloom being elected vice president of the uh, Michigan Association of Municipal Attorneys because I was going to mention it also. I think that um, uh, her colleagues uh, appreciate her endeavors uh, with that organization and uh, have chosen her to be the vice president. And that bodes well for us here in Troy because of the things that we learn from the other communities. Uh, in making my comments, um, I start with uh, Lori and John Zerleg, our city manager, because one of the things that I have enjoyed the most in being mayor and previously being a council member uh, for 18 years is that I have appreciated the professionalism of our staff and the uh, hard work that they do to gather uh, the information uh, to provide to council so that we can make the decisions because council is the policy making body of this city. We do not take care of the day to day operations. Uh, people sometimes contact us about those things but then we rightly so pass it on to staff because they take care of it. Uh, but we have to understand about it. And so I think that uh, in this community we have been very blessed over the years that I have served which does equal 25 and a half years, um, that I've been able to learn and share that in when I make a decision about things. Uh, I'm entitled to my uh, own personal opinion, uh, but I also take in all the opinions, whether I agree with them or whether I don't agree with them. Uh, whether it's uh, a small decision or something large. But we have achieved a lot in this community over many years. We've gone through some difficulties. We've had to make some difficult decisions at times. Sometimes things that were not pleasant to do at all, but we took our responsibilities seriously. I am certain that the new council members and the new mayor will take the responsibilities very seriously also. And I encourage them to uh, gather information and learn so that they can make good decisions on behalf of the community. Uh, and uh, I have enjoyed serving as mayor. Uh, I think that uh, it's afforded me an opportunity to go places and represent the community when sometimes some uh, organizations invite just the mayor. Sometimes they invite all council members, but sometimes just the mayor. And so it gives you uh, an even broader perspective to represent the community. Um, I'm proud of the things that um, our community has done, that our council has done over the years. And I too, just as others have mentioned, have served with many other people. Uh, it, it is a joint effort. Uh, and it is because of the love of the community that people step forward to run for office. And they each bring different skills, different opinions, and different ways, different mannerisms about them. But each is valued in this community. We do have the, most, the second most diverse community uh, after Ann Arbor. Uh, and we have grown and changed over the years. And even though I won't be sitting at the council table, I still will be an active member of the community and will still be proud of the fact that I live in Troy. So I thank you all for um, the support over the years. And uh, I encourage you to come out and vote on November 8th. The new council will take, uh, be sworn in on November 14th. And I will be here to pass the gavel on to uh, the new mayor. Uh, and uh, I think that 
we are very blessed in this community that we have so many people that wish, us, wish to serve us in many different ways. Um, the staff in the city of Troy has been outstanding over the years. And when you compare the staff to any other community around, we always stand head and shoulder above the others. Uh, the most difficult time for me as mayor and council member has been when we had to lay people off. It was very sad. And it was strictly due to something that we couldn't control, and that is the downturn in the economy, the valuation of homes. We're still going to have some difficult times because it's going to continue through 2014, maybe even beyond that. Uh, and so people need to be realistic about their expectations, about what can be done and what should be done. Uh, local government is a very interesting um, thing to be involved in. Completely different than some of the other uh, things that people enjoy. Uh, and so I think that the Troy community should really appreciate what they have going for it here in the city of Troy. So thank you all for your support. We do have a study item. Uh, we're going to learn about Troy's organizational evolution to economic stability, and so I encourage all of you to um, watch from home and uh, to see we're going to adjourn to the other room. And those right. of you that are here, welcome. Yes, Mr. Zerlick, we're not going to adjourn? Well, if, if I may, uh, I was asked by Mr. William LaRue, who's the district coordinator of the ARP tax aid, to mention that uh, he had met with uh, uh, Mark Miller, Jeff Bigler, and myself, and we have a, a resolution. We're going to give them absolutely a room to do taxes uh, for Troy residents, okay. and it'll be room 504, and uh, they're very happy with that result. Uh, they also spoke about, because uh, Mr. LaRue had some gentlemen with them, about establishing a Troy Friends of Seniors. Uh, and we're looking forward to uh, working with that group uh, for volunteer efforts as well in the area of recreation and community events for seniors in our community center. Thank you. Very good. Thank Mayor? you. Um, Mayor? Yes. Just, uh, just a comment about that. I want, thank you, John uh, Zerlag, city manager, for that. That's fantastic. Is there um, also, could we be uh, perhaps promote that with a little note on our website as well? And that's a great service and doesn't really cost us anything. We'll be happy to do that. That's a good idea. Well, it'll be on the website tomorrow. Okay. Uh, council will be in recess then, and uh, we will uh, adjourn to the other, uh, not adjourn, we'll be in recess and be in the other room.
promise this will be a nonpartisan presentation. <laughs> Talking about essentially uh, where we were two years ago, where we are now, and a recommendation on where we can go in the future. Uh, so there's nothing new here. Everything that was in this document has been presented to you previously, perhaps in different formats, as well as our next steps. And hopefully the next steps will be used as a bridge for the new council, and the new council will accept that bridge. If not, there are other venues that, that they could take. And just wanted to start off by saying that the city manager form of government uh, is also a uh, council manager partnership. And so I'll be talking a lot about the council manager partnership in this presentation. In addition, Mark has copies of everything I'm, I'm about to say, but I prefer not to hand it out now because I decided to actually include my notes uh, with the PowerPoint text. And if I gave you everything, there'd be no need for me to talk to you about what, what these slides have to say. <coughs> Basically, uh, we started out to have the council manager partnership agree that economic sustainability is job number one to steal a line from Ford Motor Company uh, for the community and entire organization. And, and quite frankly, it was job number one essentially for the organization. And we began these discussions essentially in late 2009 and continued on through 2010. When you see something gray, I'm going to just skip over that. That's because that's what I just got done saying. But it'll, again, it'll be in the handout. The next thing we had to do was forecast a five-year revenue line, <coughs> assuming no millage increases. And uh, we didn't just take the, uh, our in-house subject matter experts. We went to the outside as well. If you recall, it was late 2009. We recruited Bob Datto, the uh, Deputy County Executive of uh, Finance and Administration for Brooks Patterson, as well as Matt Farrell, who's a broker and president of Core Properties, who does a lot of work in the private sector. And uh, they agreed with our projections, and that projection indicated a falling revenue line through fiscal year ending 2014. It's pretty bad news. The next thing we did was to indicate the annual deficit spending amount if no changes were made to our expense line. In other words, if we continue to deliver services the way we have in the past, to use Dane's uh, methodology, old school, if you will, what would our expenses be and how would that compare to our revenues? We also did that in 2009-10. And that revenue expense forecast was a stark wake-up call to the realization that the organization was not sustainable in its current form and function. The, the gap between revenues that were falling and the expenses that we had was too great to be sustainable, even if we used all the general fund. And if we did not make changes, uh, we spoke about this in-house, in there was a strong possibility that a financial manager would take over uh, at some future point in time. And we did that in 2009-10 as well. Next, we had to develop options on how the organization would look based on a priority of service delivery venues because we did not have the funding to take care of all the service delivery venues. And in 2009-10, again, it was a busy year for us, and the mayor alluded to this, uh, a lot of the hard decisions that had to be made. City Council advanced a priority of public safety and infrastructure maintenance, and this meant that the quality of life and staff support services would be cut or eliminated first in order to delay layoffs in police, fire, and public works departments. Council manager partnership agreed that the best way to restructure the organization without going through a budget crisis every year was to develop a three-year budget. And uh, I tell my colleagues that essentially a one-year budget aims at nothing, and when you aim at nothing, you hit your target every time. I think I used to be more popular with my colleagues than I am now, but that's, that's what I tell them. That's what I'll tell anybody. And our first three-year budget was adopted in fiscal year 2010-11. I had the five stages of grief. If you recall, that was the line that I, I used to open up our first three-year budget session because essentially it was a balanced budget, but that's all it was. Uh, it was balanced. And uh, at that time, many people, including staff members, were at various stages uh, of these. 